Welcome to Knives 101. I'm Jennifer Spector Zola's newlywed at large, and today we're talking to the best kitchen guru on the planet, Sarah Pedry. Hi guys. Welcome. So Sarah knows everything there is to know about kitchen, and we get so many questions about knives that I thought I would pick her brain today. And if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments, and Peyton, our social media manager, will answer them for you by asking them to Sarah live during this week. <laughs> and I'll try my best. Yes. <laughs> so I think one of the things when you're considering registering is oftentimes people might not be that into cooking, or you might be really into cooking, but knives are like one of the most popular things to register for. Yes, right? absolutely. Especially when you get married, you want to get a gift that is uh, both very expensive and high quality, <laughs> and now's the time to do it because it's the last time, hopefully in your adult life, that you'll get gifts this nice. Yeah. So, so go for the stars. And Sarah, you're engaged. I am. I so am. did you already register for your knives? Yes. I have um, a nice knife block at home, but I'm also upgrading as a part of my registry. Amazing. And when I got married, I registered for knives, and that was the first time I think I had a real chef's knife. Okay. And now I'm basically a professional yeah. chef, so you too <laughs> can basically be Bobby Flay in the kitchen. Yes. So let's get started. What are kind of the basics that you should register for? Like you mentioned you have a knife block. Yep. Let's say, what would you recommend for someone who's really not cooking at all? And maybe this is like the first time that they're going to invest. And then what's an example for someone who's like upgrading and does have yeah, that's a great question. So we really like to talk about um, preference when you're registering for knives. So you can either go for a block where it has every single knife you could ever think about all in one place, mm -hmm. or you can register for what we call open stock knives. So you get the, you know, the knives that you know you'll use on a regular basis and you can kind of build your own block or you can use a magnetic strip to really customize the mm -hmm. knives that you want. So. The knives that I definitely recommend for someone who um, is more of a novice yeah. um, would definitely recommend something like a chef's knife. Um, you can use this for literally everything. It's your go-to, my go-to, um, you know, really will get the job done. And then there's also smaller knives um, in the block, so we like to call this a utility knife or just something that's a little bit smaller for, you know, jobs that don't require a ton of, um, you know, Heavy duty. heavy duty knives, yeah, more like if you need to just slice a tomato quickly or something like that. And then you'll find even smaller knives. Um, Ooh, that's a cutie. Let's yeah. show everyone that little. <laughs> so this is a, a, a beak paring knife, something like that. Okay. <laughs> but it, it's curved for the little jobs, like if you're doing um, strawberries and you just want to, you know, cut a strawberry in your hand or just a really small job that you don't actually need a huge cutting board, um, these knives are really good. One thing that I, I don't know who else out there has this, but before I had real knives, I had maybe some steak knives, which were serrated, and yep. I was using those to cut basically everything. Okay. <laughs> and I think now that I have kind of a bigger knife set and I do a lot more cooking, I realize like having a serrated knife is not always what I want, sure. and it kind of can like shred things up. Yep, exactly. So I feel like with that little beak knife, like here's what we're talking about. So this is a steak knife, yep. right? That has like a little serrated edge, but then, there was that other knife that's not serrated, that's more of like, yep. and then you can have, I don't know where the paring knife is, oh here it is. <laughs> like that one is really good to help you with like some of like the smaller peeling projects and yep. things like that versus if you use your steak knife, you would just like. <laughs> Destroy it. Destroy it, yeah. yeah. So we definitely recommend only using a serrated knife for things like um, like a really crunchy bread. Mm -hmm. You obviously want to take um, you know the serration on the knife and really get through that crust. Um, serrated knives are also good for things that have um, really delicate interiors, but um, you know, kind of a, a hard outside. So, for example, I would say a tomato knife is a perfect um, serrated Crucial. knife. Crucial, yes, Crucial. because if you try to cut a tomato sometimes with with a dull knife, you realize that you just end up with like a really smushed um, <laughs> tomato. So, uh, yeah, definitely time and place for serrated, but not for everything. Got it. Okay, and so I feel like. Um, there's sort of like two nations that kind of own like high quality knives. There's Germany and Japan. So yep. what would you say, we have two examples here, so maybe yep. talk us through these two brands and kind of what are the differences if you're looking for kind of a more high quality specialized knife. Should you go German? Should you go Japanese? Yes. yes. 
Um, so, you know, much like should I buy block or should I buy open stock knives, um, German versus Japanese is definitely preference based. Um, so you'll see with a German knife, um, it typically is a little bit heavier. The blade itself is thicker. Um, it technically doesn't have any bells and whistles. It's just, you know, a nice piece of steel. Mm -hmm. Where the Japanese, um, they really pride themselves on making things beautiful. So you will find um, either this Damascus pattern or, you know, like a really nice handle. Um, That's and beautiful. The blade itself is just a little bit thinner. I don't know if you can really tell the difference. Here, let's turn it towards yeah. the camera. <laughs> but the blade see? is just slightly thinner and the actual knife itself is a little bit lighter in weight. Mm -hmm. um, but the really Japanese not a lot of is, light, is lighter. Mm -hmm. Okay, but not a lot of true differences. So let's turn to look how beautiful these knives are, and look at that handle. Look that's at that really, handle. <laughs> really special detail. That's really beautiful. So I think one of the things I've noticed, with, um, folks, when you're we're talking about building a knife block, is you can build your knife block, but then you can add extra knives mm -hmm. outside of maybe the brand that you registered for for the knife block, sure. and kind of like mix it up. So are there any? Let's say you you know, or building your knife block, are there any knives that you should get duplicates of? Like if you already have the chef's knife, should you get another one? Like what are the ones where you would say maybe have like a few extra? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I know I personally cook with my fiance all the time uh -huh. and we always kind of divvy up the vegetables, divvy up everything equally. And so I find Sounds myself- Sounds like a great guy. <laughs> yes. Well, he lets me cook with him halfway, so. Um, but we find ourselves both reaching for the chef's knife because we love it, mm -hmm. but, um, so you can either do two chef's knives if you're, you know, always cooking together and you always love to grab the same knife. Mm -hmm. Or I actually like to use the Santoku knife if I'm, um, you know, reaching for the chef's knife, but I, I settle for a Santoku mm -hmm. because it's, you know, definitely a powerhouse in the kitchen and you can do almost everything you can do with a chef's knife with just a, you know, smi slightly smaller blade. Should we start a show called Settle for the Santoku? <laughs> no. Actually, the Santoku is um, amazing because um, say you're cutting uh, a potato and sometimes when you cut potatoes, the starch just sticks to the blade yes, and you're constantly you know, taking things off. But the Santoku typically has this hollow edge and so um, actually vegetables or you know starches actually fall right off the blade instead of sticking. Hmm. So actually, I had no idea what yes. that was for. <laughs> so you don't have to settle for Santoku, it's actually a very good knife. Okay, marry Santoku. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, Peyton yes. has a question. We have two questions. Okay. Connie Kim wants to know, how do you sharpen a serrated knife? Ooh. Oh, good question. So I would say if you're sharpening a serrated knife, it might be best to actually send it back to the manufacturer mm -hmm. and have them professionally sharpen it. Um, a lot of these high quality brands like Bluestock, they offer programs where you can send the knives back in and they'll sharpen them for you and then send them on home. So you don't have to ruin um, you know, knives on your own. By and your fingers. Yes. <laughs> so um, it can be done, but I would say you know, leave it to a professional. and. You know, knives when they're over $100 each, um, it's just like you wouldn't take your wedding gown to um, and put it in the washing Washer, machine. Yeah. You would take it to a dry cleaner and make sure that someone um, professionally okay. cleans it. That's really interesting. So when you're, if you're, let's say you get your knives, you get your gift, post-wedding, settling in, should you keep the packaging or the box that the knife came in just in case you're continuing to kind of like sharpen your knives or have a relationship with the manufacturer or like a brand like Blue Stuff, can you just kind of call them up or email them and they... Yeah. I would say always keep your receipts for anything that's nice. Um, I mean, typically these companies, um, you're not bringing them a knife that they haven't manufactured, so they'll understand right. that, um, you know, that it's something that is something they should cover. But yeah, always keep your receipts and keep any Luckily handy on Zola, time. it's all there. Yes. So you don't need to, you need to keep anything. Exactly. Cool. Peyton, another question. Yes. Um, Louis Tour wants to know, when should you use the ceramic sharpening block versus the sharpening wand thing that comes with the knife set? I think he's asking, what's the difference between sharpening and honing? Ooh. So this is the honer, right? Yes. So this, um, Let's honing see steel. <laughs> yes. so the honing steel is something that usually comes with every single block and it's really meant to um, not only sharpen your knife but also straighten it. So when you are using your knife time after time, sometimes, you know, the blade starts to get a little bit wonky and mm -hmm. this will really put that straightness back into your blade. 
Um, but if you're really just looking to sharpen your knife, I would get a handheld sharpener or even an electric tabletop sharpener um, because all that does is it really just um, puts a fine edge on the blade uh, mm -hmm. rather than actually straightening the blade right. itself. So when everyone is taking this and thinking that they're like totally sharpening yeah. up their knives. <laughs> yeah, it does, it puts a nice edge on it, right. but it's really meant to keep your blades in, um, you know, perfect straight Straight position. and narrow. Yes, yes. Got it. Oh, another question. Like I said, it's all preference based. Um, I love a block set just because mm -hmm. you get one gift, you forget about it, um, everything you need is there. But for some people, they really love particular knives and they don't really need a lot of these um, extra knives. And so I would say just do whatever you feel. And, yeah. um, you can always add, I think it's nice to get a knife block yep. and then you can add pieces. I also have a magnetic strip, which I love. Oh, cool. It's so convenient. You can just like put it above where you're. Yeah chopping things Chop up. your nice knives. Um, so you kind of mentioned the uses for all of the different knives. I feel like a lot of people are like, why is this scissor in my knife block? <laughs> yeah. What would you say you can use the scissors for when you're cooking? Yes. So these are actually shears. Oh. So, and this particular example are pull-apart shears, Ooh. so you can wash them easily. But shears are a little bit different than scissors. They're really meant for um, if you have like a nice chicken breast mm -hmm. and you want to cut it into pieces. A shear is going to be a lot easier um, to just manage something like that than to put it on your cutting board, chop it up. Right. Um, but definitely don't use these for paper. Don't use them for cutting fabric. I mean, you want to keep your shears in great condition yeah. so they cut things um, just like a knife would. I love having these in my kitchen. Yeah. I use them to um, chop up herbs. Oh, nice. It's a lot yeah. easier than like rolling around, yeah. well, having your chives <laughs> roll everywhere. Yeah, there's a million ways to do Don't it. Don't you when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, another question. Um, how do you properly hold a knife? That is a great question as well. So, you know, this is not the proper way, just grabbing it by the handle. Um, however, it does, it does work. So what they recommend is you actually take your index finger and your thumb and you pinch right here so that you have the ultimate control over the actual blade and mm -hmm. then you can cut it in a rocking motion. Um, you know, personally, I wish I did this every time I cut, but I, uh, I don't. Typically, I just grab it and cut, but if you want to become a professional, mm -hmm. definitely pinch here at the blade and, and try rocking. I won both. Yeah, you should, should try I, too. Should I chop up this lemon? Yes, so we'll actually, we'll move your index finger Ooh, right thank here you, Sarah. and your thumb and see how that gives you control. Ooh. <laughs> That's a fine Changing knife. your life. <laughs> um, so one of the things I thought it was interesting, I took a cooking class once and the chef was saying like really feel the weight of your knife and like let the knife do the work versus yeah. like I feel like a lot of people watch Top Chef or something and they're trying to be like Yes. And that's sort of exactly. aggressive. And those people have spent, you know, 20, 30 years using knives, so they really understand where the knife is in their hand. Mm -hmm. But I personally go very slow. Um, I, you know, would rather, you know, cut slowly than cut off my fingers. Yes. And so don't feel like you have to be like all the people on Food Network. Um, you we'll can do another <laughs> segment on knife skills. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're not there yet. Yes. Um, I, so I wanted to know what, you know, we talked a little bit about German versus, um, Japanese, but like in general, what should people be looking for in a high quality knife? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So, you know, typically I like to recommend forged knives. So there's a slight difference between forged and stamped. As you can see in this exact same knife shape from Wustoff, um, both chef knives, but this one, um, the forged knife comes from a larger block of steel and then they really hone it down into the shape. So if you look, you can kind of see the, you know, the the bulk of the material right here, and then they, you know, hone it down into the blade. Mm -hmm. For this one, if you look at this, it's just one piece of metal all the way down, um, and this is called a stamped blade, Okay. Um, which is, you know, equally fine. They usually are a little bit less expensive, mm -hmm. um, a little bit more challenging to maintain long term. Mm -hmm. um, but I would def definitely recommend if you're looking for the highest quality and the you know the mo most value long term would go with a forged knife. Got it. Okay. And in general, when you're looking online, is that in the description? Yes, it okay. should definitely be in the description everywhere on Zola. So oh, okay, you should know. Are there any other things in um, when people are talking about knives like 
you know, we talk a lot about thread count in bedding. Like, are there other terms when we're looking at knives where we should really be like, oh, I know what that means, or that's something that I should look out mm -hmm. for? Good question. So I would say most often um, the quality of knife is going to be um, in the brand name itself. Got it. So we love Wustoff just because they have a 200-year history um, of making knives in Germany. Mm -hmm. And really, they, they've mastered the craft of making them. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think it's really up to the consumer to find what they feel the most um, excited about. So some people really love the design. Mm -hmm. Some people really love the ability to sharpen. So you just really have to find a good a knife block that works okay. for you. But forge versus stamp is like a yes. good guide in terms of like deciphering quality. Yeah. Okay. That's usually my recommendation. Cool. Peyton, I think we have another question. Uh, Ari Samuel Gare, Gare wants to know if he needs a meat cleaver, and can you repeat the question? So, do you need a meat cleaver? Do you need a meat cleaver? Yeah. Well, I would say if Ari is eating a lot of meat, he should get a cleaver. What's the benefit of having a meat cleaver? So, meat cleavers are usually... Um, there's unfortunately not one in this block, but they're a very large knife that if you are making ribs mm -hmm. or you're, you're trying to cut something with a bone, you can basically just hammer it down and it will slice through everything. Um, but if you're just cutting a chicken breast, you really don't yeah. need one. Okay. <laughs> so if you're a barbecue pit master, yeah. you get a cleaver, yeah. but I think for the home chef or kind of like the starter newlywed home, start with your knife block, yeah. start with your chef's knife. And Jackie Risser wants to know, um, what's all this talk with Billy Forge and full King knives? What do Yes. So you're asking, can you say that again? About uh, fully forged and full tang. Fully forged and full tang knives. What does it mean? Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, you know jargon words in the knife industry. And when you mentioned fully forged, um, that's what I was talking about earlier. So they take a larger piece of steel and then they really forge it down into the blade rather than stamping it out of you know one piece of material. Um, and then full tang refers to the fact that the blade actually runs um, through the entire handle. Mm. So it doesn't actually just stop right where you see this black part. Mm -hmm. The entire blade runs through the knife and this gives it a ton of stability and you don't have to worry about, you know, cutting something and then having the entire blade snap off in your, in your turkey. Um, it really, the entire knife is, uh, is the blade when it's um, full tang. Okay. I think we are wrapping up, but we have one more question. Uh, Carolyn Bale Young wants to know what basics she really needs. So, asking about basics, I think we talked about that a little bit. Yep. You're recommending registering for a knife block. Yep. And or if you have to only have three knives, mm -hmm. you want to do a chef's knife. So, this big guy, usually about eight inches, will cover all of your major tasks. You'll want to do a utility knife. Let's find him in here. No, not that guy. I buried it a little. A utility knife, which is also, you know, will help you with vegetables, will help you with, um, you know, you can even do a lemon with a utility knife. Um, and then the Great last... Blade. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and then the last one will be your paring knife, which is good for, you know, handheld projects or just anything small that you, you don't need a massive knife for. Cool. So if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and Sarah can answer them for you. And um, thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys.